Now that you know how to write chemical formulas, there are a lot of different calculations we can do with them. One is to calculate their formula mass. The formula mass is the sum of the atomic masses of the atoms in the formula. The atomic mass can be found at the bottom of each square on the periodic table. It is usually a decimal place because it's an average of all the different isotopes of that particular element. If we want to calculate the formula mass, we need to know the chemical formula of the compound. So in a water molecule, there are two hydrogens. So we're going to go 2 times the mass of hydrogen, which is 1.01. .01. That gives us a total of 2.02. .02. And then we look up the mass of 1 oxygen and find that its mass is 16. So 1 times 16 is 16. And then all we have to do is add these two numbers together to get the formula mass of water, which is going to be 18.02 AMU. The unit AMU stands for atomic mass units, and that's the mass of one molecule of water. If we had a chemical formula like copper nitrate that had parentheses, we would need to distribute the tiny little two on the outside of the parentheses to everything inside the parentheses. So to calculate the formula mass for copper nitrate, we know there's one copper, so the mass of copper is 63.55, and 1 times 63.55 is still 63.55. Then we take this number 2 and we distribute it through and we know that there are two nitrogens. So each nitrogen has a mass of 14.01, .01, so two nitrogens would have a mass of 28.02. .02. And then we take this 2 and we distribute it to the oxygen and we find there are six oxygens. Again, each oxygen is 16. So 6 times 16 is 96. Then we add these three numbers up to get a formula mass of 187.57 AMU. And that is the mass of one formula unit of copper nitrate. The term molar mass is very similar to formula mass. The molar mass of the substance is the mass of one mole of that substance and is usually measured in grams. Remember from the beginning of the year that one mole is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles. Particles can be things like atoms, molecules, or formula units. Now the molar mass is numerically identical to the formula mass. It just has a different unit. That unit is grams per mole. If I were to measure the mass of one water molecule, it would have a mass of 18 AMU. But if I had 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules, or one mole of molecules, now I have a measurable volume of water that, when weighed on a balance, has a mass of 18 grams. Just like we did mole conversions with atoms, we can also do mole conversions with chemical formulas. So ibuprofen is the active ingredient in many over-the-counter pain relievers. It has a chemical formula of C13H18O2. If a bottle of the pain reliever contains 33 grams of ibuprofen, how many moles of ibuprofen are in the bottle? So the first thing we need to do is calculate the molar mass of ibuprofen. Using your calculator, you would go 13 times 12.01, .01 because that's the mass of carbon, 18 times 1.01 .01 for the mass of hydrogen, and 2 times 16 for the mass of oxygen, and add those numbers together to get a molar mass of 206.31 grams per mole. In order to convert 33 grams into moles, we'll need to set up a t-chart. So you write down the value that you're given, 33 grams, move the unit gram to the bottom, and write the unit mole on top. Now since the molar mass is 206 grams per mole, I'll write the number 206 on the bottom per one mole on top. And then in your calculator, 33 divided by 206.31 gives you 0 0.16 moles. There are some additional calculations we can do with the same problem. If instead of how many moles of ibuprofen, I wanted to know how many molecules of ibuprofen are in the bottle, I can start with the value of moles. So I already calculated that I have 0.16 moles of ibuprofen. Draw my t-chart. 
transfer moles to the bottom, and write molecules on the top. Now remember that there are always 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules in one mole. So I would need to multiply 0.16 moles times Avogadro's number. This gives me an answer of 9.6 times 10 to the 22nd molecules. If instead I wanted to know what the total mass of carbon was in the bottle, I needed to add an additional step to my calculation. I would start off my problem with the number of moles in the bottle, so 0 0.16 moles of ibuprofen. Draw my t-chart. I know that one mole of ibuprofen, C13H18O2, contains 13 moles of carbon. I know this because this subscript 13 means for every one mole of ibuprofen, there are 13 moles of carbon. I then transfer moles of carbon to the bottom of my next box and grams of carbon on the top. And because I have units grams over moles, or grams per mole, I know I need to use the molar mass. So the molar mass of carbon is 12.01 grams per one mole. I can then plug these values into my calculator. So 0.16 times 13 times 12.01 gives me an answer of 25 grams of carbon. We can also calculate the percent composition of different elements in a compound. We can do this by taking the mass of each element and dividing it by the mass of the compound, and then take that answer times 100 to make it a percentage. So to calculate the percent of copper and the percent of sulfur in copper sulfide, the first thing I need to know is the mass of the copper sulfide. So in your calculator, take the mass of copper times 2 plus the mass of sulfur to get a molar mass of 159.16 grams per mole. That's the molar mass of copper sulfide. In order to find the percentage of copper in the compound, I need to take the total mass of copper in the chemical formula. So because there are two coppers, the mass of the copper is 127.1. And then I divide that by the total mass of the compound, which is 159.16. Take this times 100, and I get a total percentage of 79.86% copper. In order to find the percentage of sulfur in the compound, I need to account for the total mass of sulfur in the formula. Since there's only one sulfur, the mass of sulfur in the formula is 32.06. Divide that by the total mass of the formula, 159.16, and then multiply all of that times 100. This gives me a total of 20.14% sulfur. One way to double check your work on a percent composition calculation is that the total percentage of all the elements in the compound should add up to 100%.